Hi guys, it's Sherry. Hope you're having a wonderful afternoon. So, let's do something wonderful. Y'all stay tuned. Earlier we made these wonderful, absolutely fabulous card boxes with coordinating envelopes and some of the most gorgeous cards. These will hold A2 size cards, which are four and a quarter by five and a half. Got multiple requests for a box that will hold um, five by seven cards. And y'all know what? That's what we're going to make right now. So I am going to be using sheet paper from Rossi for this project, but I will give you the 12 by 12 measurements in the event that you don't have the sheet paper. So we're going to start with the chipboard first. We're going to need two pieces of chipboard that measure 7 and 7 eighths by 2. We'll need one piece of chipboard that measures 2 by 5 and 7 eighths. One piece that measures 2 by 6. Two pieces that measure 8 by 6, and I use a medium weight chipboard. And then for the inside liner, we need a piece that measures six by five and three quarters. And then we need a piece that measures 12 by five and three quarters. So to make the actual jacket of our box, I'll be working with a sheet that measures eight by 20. Or if you're using 12 by 12 pieces, you'll need two pieces that measure eight by 11 and you'll need to join those. And then for the portion of the box that is U-shaped, I will be working with four and a half by 24, or if you're using 12 by 12, you'll need to join two pieces of 12 by 12 paper. And I am going to be working with this gorgeous red posy paper, and it's just absolutely fabulous. So let's get started. Okay, so we need to start with the piece that measures eight by 20, and our chipboard piece that measures six by eight. So I am going to take this and place it down. Then I'll take my chipboard piece that measures two by six and I am going to put that down giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And then I'll take my final eight by six piece of chipboard, place that down again giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. I'm going to flip this over and just smooth out my paper to the tape. And now I'll just stand it up and start folding over my edges to get my crease. And then once I have my edges folded over, I'll simply come back and I am going to miter those ends just like that. And so once the ends are mitered on all four sides, I'll use my glue place it on the end piece here and I'll fold this over. Use my bone folder to really get that stuck and I'll do it one more time. just like that and we need to do this on all four sides of our board. All right guys, so I have my edges folded over. I've also added my tape to the inside chipboard here. You can see that sheen. And now I am placing glue all around the perimeter of the inside liner piece which measures 12 by five and three quarters. And now I can take this and place it down and slide it towards me just a little. So I am going to place this down, try to get it nice and even. I'll use my paper towel to really smush that glue in. Then I'll use my bone folder to really work that glue in. We're going to place the six by five and three quarter inch piece down. So I am just going to take this and try to get it matched up. Just like that. And my glue will dry clear. 
so I'm not really worried about what's showing right now. So now we have the jacket of our box complete and you can already see how gorgeous it's going to be. But we're going to set this to the side and we're going to make the U-shaped side pieces. Okay, so now that I am ready to make the box portion, I'll be using my paper that measures four and a half by 24. If you don't have the sheet paper, you can take two pieces of four and a half by 12 inch paper, join that together, and you'll end up with a piece that's probably four and a half by 23 and a half, depending on how wide the tape is that you use to join it. But here's what we need to do. I am going all the way to the bottom to lay this down because I want the end of my chipboard to be flush with the end of my paper, just like that. Now I'll take my two by five and seven eighths inch piece and I am going to place it down, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And then I'll take my final seven and seven eighths by two inch piece and I'll place that down again, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. So now I'll bring in my finger blade and just flare out here, remove the excess and I'll do the same thing here just to remove that excess. And I am going to place tape on this and I'll be right back. All right guys, so now that I have my tape on the chipboard, all I'm going to do is take this long piece, stand it up and just get ready to fold it over just like this. And I'll smooth it out on this side first then I'll flip it over, smooth it out from end to end now I'll use my finger blade and I am just going to remove all of my excess paper. So just like with the other box, I'll have a U shape and I am going to take that U shape and I need to slide it all the way back so that it's hitting right here. I want it to hit the spine of this box and then we'll have a completed box. So the way that we do this is I am going to use my glue and I am going to place glue on the exposed side of this um, panel here. So on all three panels, you're going to have some raw chipboard showing and all you need to do is cover it with a thin bead of glue. Okay, so once you have your glue on the U-shape, we're just going to flip it over and I'll start on this side and I am going to take this all the way up to the score mark and then I'll lay that piece down and I'll fold this around so that I can get it stuck down as well. So now I need to look at this, get it nice and straightened because it's not. And then once I have it where I think I need for it to be, I'm simply going to bring the back up just to make sure that everything's going to hit properly. And it is, I don't want any gapping there. So once I know that I'm good, I'm simply going to press down and allow this to dry. Okay, so now I can take these raw edges right here, place glue on them, I can pull the back up just like this. Make sure I've got it stuck where I want it. And then I'm just going to press in on this to get it stuck. And then I will let this dry on its own. Okay guys, our box is done and it looks fantastic. Isn't this just beautiful? This is a very deep box and it will hold your five by seven cards. This box is seven and seven eighths of an inch this way, five and seven eighths of an inch this way, and it is two inches deep. So now we are going to make one card for this. I'm not going to make the whole set with you guys, just one card and one envelope and I'll make the others off camera. But 
To make this, I am using a piece of my decorative Rossi paper that measures 10 by 8. And then I'll be using an 8 by 10 piece of heavyweight cardstock that I get from Hobby Lobby. So what I'm going to try to do, because I cut this really close, so I'm going to try to make sure I get it measured as close as I can. And then once I have that mounted just like that, I'll use my blade to trim off the excess paper. So then once I have my paper trimmed, this is what I'm left with. And at this point, I am just going to take this and fold it in half, just like this. And now I will just use my bone folder to really reinforce my crease. And you can see that we have a gorgeous, gorgeous card that works with this box. And I am just going to take this card and put it on the inside so that you can see that it fits with plenty of room around it. So now we can go ahead and make the envelope, and this is the liner portion. I actually had to run it through my Xyron to get the sticky back on it because it's raining outside today, so I can't go out and spray it with the spray adhesive, but if you don't have a Xyron, this is certainly a great alternative. So I am just going to peel this off, and I am going to bring in a piece that measures nine and seven eighths by nine and seven eighths. This piece of decorative paper measures nine and five eighths by nine and five eighths. So all I'm going to do is basically try to get this laid down to where it's fairly even. If it's not, guys, I'm not going to stress over it because it really won't show that much. And you can see down here, I didn't quite get it even. So I am going to use my scissors so that I can bring this up to my face and get this trimmed. And now I'll bring in my envelope punch board. And like I said, if you don't have one of these, this is a great tool to have in your arsenal because it makes making envelopes so much easier than trying to figure out what your measurements need to be. This tells me that if I am making a five by seven card, I need to start with paper that measures nine and seven eighths and I need to make my first punch at four and one eighth. So I'll put this in at four and an eighth and I'll punch and then I'll use my stylus to go on the inside and just score. And what I like about this one, two, three punch board that I have, it has the extension on it. So if your paper is as large as what I'm working with, you don't have to worry about repositioning it to try to make it fit. The arm has the groove from here all the way out. So all I'm doing at this point is matching up this little pointer with this score mark here. I'll press and I'll go in and make my groove. Then I'll do the same thing. I'm going to match up that pointer right there with the score mark. Press again and get my score. And then I'll do my last one. Sometimes it's a little hard for me to see that score mark, but I'll punch and make my final score. So now I can take this and just fold it to create my envelope. And so now you can see where I kind of went close to the edge here. Really doesn't matter because when I fold this up, all of that is hidden and you'll just have that beautiful lined look. So I'll use my glue and I am going to place glue all the way up to this point. I will not go up to the point. And then I can take this, put it down, use my bone folder to get everything nice and stuck. And now I have a wonderful envelope to go with my card. Now my eyes are playing tricks on me because when I looked at this paper, it looked more creamy. Now I can see that it really is a stark white and that's okay because now I can still show you guys that we have a box that will hold our five by seven envelope and card. 
So I'm not going to decorate these. I really wanted to show you guys the whole process so that you can see that making a box to hold five by seven, same process as making any other box um, for your cards. This is a very simplified process for box making and it's a very durable one. So guys, I hope that you have liked this project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.